and to Psalm 93, which is pretty much in the middle of the Bible. I'm going to find it. It's uh, 601, page 601. But our reading is from this week, from our Readers 1 passage, is this, this week. So uh, do continue to read this this week and see what God says to you as you read it day after day. I'm sure there will be new things done each day that you read it prayerfully. Anyway, let's hold this Bible in our hands, remind ourselves what it is we're reading from. I hold God's Word with my hands. It encourages, corrects, and instructs me. Lord, speak to me now. A short psalm. Psalm 93. And uh, it tells us a great deal that we're going to be thinking of over the next uh, few moments this morning. But let me read verses 1 to 5 of Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established, firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters. Mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. We give thanks for his word to us this morning. So our first section this morning, we are in the middle of this series, we're in stack bang in the middle of this series of five uh, this week on worship. And I hope, I really do hope that we have all been challenged, indeed excited, by our readings in Readers 1 and by the teaching we're looking at uh, during this series. I said that God is eternal. He is the king on the throne. And he requires us to enter the throne room, so to speak, and to bow humbly before him. That's some of the, the bits that we've pulled out in the last couple of weeks in this series. And today and during this week, I want us to explore this image of God as the eternal king, the eternal king. But I hope it will aid us in our worship of him. That is the aim of the series, that we get closer to him in our worship. That we don't just pray, praise and thank him, but that we really do worship him. The reading for this week, Psalm 93, was written some two and a half thousand, three thousand years ago. It talks of God's reign as king that has been established in verse 2 it says from of old from of old so we have this long reigning king now we have i guess in this country some longer reigning kings and queens our own queen elizabeth now is one of the longest but some have been a lot shorter than that of course Human rule is so limited and really ineffective compared with God's eternal rule, which is constant and is consistent. That is the big difference, if you like. Um, God's rule is constant and consistent. It is eternal. God's rule is forever. It has no beginning. 
it has no end. It is eternal. And we can look back at history and we can learn about our past leaders, past rulers. We can discuss the merits of our current leadership in this country. We can talk about what we want in future leaders in this country. But God is the eternal leader. And that's what we're thinking about today. And the first thing I want to mention out of this psalm this morning is that God reigns, he was a past king as well. He is the king of the past. He is a God that we come to worship. A God who goes back, all the way back, if you like, in eternity. Verse 2, I've already mentioned it, says, Your throne is established from of old. It goes way back from of old. You are from everlasting. There is no kind of, you know, he's not a lightweight leader, if you like to say. Some of our leaders come and go, some years, some decades, some only a few weeks maybe. But God is no lightweight leader. We can put our trust in him because he has been there from the beginning. He has been there from of all. He has a long track record, if you will. And it may sometimes appear that, that God is more effective in history than at other certain times, but nonetheless, he is there. It may seem that God is, is more in your life at certain times than others. But nonetheless, he is there. He is forever. He's been there right from the beginning. God's rule is stable because he's always been king. That is important when it comes to worshipping God and knowing who God is. <clears throat> Everything in the world pretty much comes and goes. It rises up, it fades away. But God has been there and he has been God since before even the beginning of time. We'll come back to this thought in a moment. But that gives us a sense of awe, doesn't it? That God has been there right from before time. Always been there. And when we look back at our lives, we can see where God has been at work. We can look back, oh yes, I remember God being there. He really helped me through this. And we can look back and see that God was always there for us. It may have been at times of despair that we see God has been at work in those moments and brought us through it. It may have been some turning point in our life. And yeah, at that point, God, you really just pulled me through that. It may have been just a great time of joy when we realized that God was there and just, you know, bringing us to a point of celebration if we could feel like we were just jumping for joy because of what God has done in the past. We can all see that God works in our lives. And so often we do look back and remember that time when God did this to us. If nothing else, we can look back and say, I remember that day when, when God came into my life, when I, when I came to Christ as my Savior, and, and that point was, was a, a wonderful point. And I've said we don't always, it's not good always to look back, but there are some great points. Yeah, God was there. God was there. God was there. Leading me through. Helping me through. Giving me joy. <coughs> God is king of the past. I hope you have this magnificence, this holiness but also this majesty this kingship of God and God they say has been king in the past but also from this scripture we see that God is the king of the present you notice that in verse 1 it says the Lord 
reigns. That is in the present tense. The Lord reigns. That's now. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. There is that real sense that God, yes, was king of the past, but he's also king of the present. He has done great things, but he is here today to do great things and be our king. You know, we can read our Bible sometimes uh, because a lot of it points to kind of history, if you like. And we can think how great God was and how wonderful it would have been if we were there at that time when God did this or Jesus did that. And we can look back by reading the Bible. It's very easy if you like to kind of look back and say, this is what God did. It's good to see something like Revelation 4 and Revelation 5 to kind of see that God is right until the end of the age, so to speak. He is always there. But God is the king of the present. God is on the throne right now. And yes, we could say that, that God did some great things even in our recent history. And why are you doing those things now? We can look back at footage of thousands of people responding at the Billy Graham crusade and, and, and coming forward and so on. You know, why, why didn't that happen now? God was working then, but he doesn't be working now. Well, he may not be working in the same way. He may not be working in the same time and same place, but he is still working. And he is still bringing thousands upon thousands of people to the Lord Jesus Christ. In large gatherings, too, around the world. Not necessarily at Haringey or Wembley. But around the world, he is doing great things today, now. God is still on the throne today. <clears throat> and it's been said that many things in life are not static. Nothing kind of stays still in so many ways. Things are always changing and perhaps now more than any time we are in a, we're in a stage uh, of history, if you like, a stage of, of our life where things are changing an awful lot. And we change and adapt in our lives. And the older we grow, the more experience we get and so on, uh, that we, we change as well. And things are never really the same as they were yesterday because things have changed and we have changed. And our relationship with God is different today than it was yesterday, or at least it should be. It would not be the same tomorrow either. We are either getting closer to God, or we are moving away from Him. I wonder what it is with you. Is God still the King of your life today? Does God have really any impact on your life and your day-to-day -day living this week? Now. We need to ask ourselves that question. Is God as real today as he was at that point that you can look back on when he changed your life or when you accepted Christ as Savior or when you were baptized or whatever? That that was a great time then, but it should be even greater now because you should be walking with him and getting closer to him. Our relationship with God has to be current, has to be now. Whatever experience we had with God in the past is of little value if we don't continue to cultivate the relationship with Him today. It must be present. It must be up to date, so to speak. So God is King of the past. God is King of the present. Sorry, I should have moved that on. <coughs> but I'm going to stop there anyway. <laughs> so I'll press a break. 
So we've had that God is king of the past. Definitely king of the past, and we all recognise God is king of the past. We all go, you know, God did this, God reigned there, and, and so on. Uh, God is king of the present today. He is here with us today. He is available to us today. We should worship him today and come before him in his throne room. But another thing we find in this passage, in this Psalm 93, is that God is also king of the future. You kind of knew that was coming, but I wonder you found it in the passage. The psalmist doesn't linger in the past. The psalmist doesn't even stay in the present. He proclaims that God is the God of the future as well. Verse 5. <coughs> Verse 5. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. The future. God is the God, He is the King, rather, of the future. Forevermore. The psalmist is not anticipating a regime change in the future. God is always going to be there. You know, human, in human terms, things change, as I say. Kings change, authorities change, even countries change. Rulers, prime ministers, presidents, and the like come and go. One is here one day and gone the next. But God does not come and go. He isn't going to leave his office and be replaced by someone else with different policies. <clears throat> when we are fearful of the future, be assured the same God who was there at the beginning, the same God who is with us here today, is going to be there right into the future. He's there ahead of us. He's already there. And if you're worried about the end of your life, what will happen, where you will go, then fear not. God is already there, waiting for us. Jesus said to his disciples, I am with you to the very end of the age. In other words, right to the end, right to the present, right in the, part of, in the future, I mean. In my tense wrong. Have you put your trust in him for your future? Have you put your trust in him for your future? Have you handed your life over to him and said, Lord, I will follow you all the days of my life because you are my Lord, you are my eternal King, and I put my trust in you. For the future, for the rest of my days and beyond. Have you said that to him? If you haven't lately, then it's a good thing to do this week when you're reading this passage and when you're praying. But Lord, I just put my life into your hands for the future. I don't have to worry. It doesn't have to bother me because I know that you are there. I'm going to be with you forever in my future. You know, our lives as individuals have changed a lot over the years. Jobs, family circumstances, houses, our friends, maybe even our churches. Things are constantly moving and changing. You know, we change our car, we change our clothes, we change, you know, everything is changing all the time. But God, is our anchor. He is our rock. He is our stability in these times of change because he is constant and consistent. God is the king of the past. God is the king of the present. God is the king of the future. He is eternal. And do we understand what eternal is? Eternal means you kind of throw away time. Time goes out the window because it doesn't apply 
in eternity. Eternal is not never-ending time. We like to kind of explain it in that way because we can't think of anything else. But eternal is not just time and time and time and time and time and keeps going. That's not what eternal is. Time really isn't involved in eternity. In eternity there is no yesterday. There is no now. There is no tomorrow. Eternal is eternal. Now, it's hard for us to grasp, but if you do kind of start to grasp the idea that eternal, eternity, is outside of time and space, we've talked about this before, then it does answer a lot of those tricky questions that people ask about God and about heaven and about death and all those things, because eternity is outside of time and space. Last week I said, many can't grasp the idea of space having no end, that it just keeps going. There's no brick wall at the end of space. I know some scientists come up with all sorts of funny ideas, but there's generally help that just, it keeps going. And people marvel at that, but they kind of understand it. So why do people not believe that God is eternal, outside of even all that time and space? He is beyond that. <clears throat> no beginning, no end. He is beyond all that we know and understand. That is what makes him God. If we have God that is limited by time and space, that restricts who God is. So this is our Heavenly Father. This is the one that we worship. And this is why I am talking about this in the middle of a worship series. God is bigger than anything, anyone that we can imagine. Because he is outside of our time and space understanding. He is beyond our wildest dreams, as one of the songs said. And therefore he is very worthy of our worship. He is very worthy of our adoration. In our yesterday, in our today, and in our tomorrow. Indeed, until we are with him ourselves in eternity. Let's bow before this amazing God and speak with him.